The name of our production is Friend or Foe, produced by our team, which is Almost Famous, for Principles of Management, taught by Dr. Steve Diasio. For our project introduction, management is the process of assembling and using sets of resources in a goal-directed manner to accomplish tasks in an organizational setting. In an ever-changing environment, managers must obtain skills to strategically manage resources available to maintain and advance competitive advantage of an organization. Our, our group designed a pre-presentation interview setting in which a show producer and a screenwriter introduced the show's management concepts regarding strategic planning, decision making, and communication to the audience. The name of our original story is Friend or Foe, a Medieval Kingdom themed comic series introducing K-12 students to management concepts. Let me introduce our team. At the top, we have Ming, Damie, and Ariel. Um, this is our writing team, and they are responsible for brainstorming, um, editing in concepts of management throughout the story plot, and you know just the story plot as the whole. At the bottom, we have Alexander, Alina, and Eber, and they are our TV protect production team, and they're responsible for the, the visuals, um, forming illustrations for the TV show, and coordinating TV production. And together, we are an effective team. As far as teamwork, we met on USF St. Pete campus for effective communication. Um, we would meet on a virtual platform like Skype or Ubu when we had face-to-face -face schedule conflicts. Uh, we used mind mapping skills to illustrate our thought processes of how the storyline progresses and where to apply different management themes throughout the production. We applied uh, YouTube as an effective communication channel to deliver um, group project assignment instructions. We used uh, Google Docs to coordinate group assignments together when we couldn't um, meet up and we all wanted to um, have input on certain assignments. We delegated our team into two, two subgroups. One it was a writing team that focused on the project booklet drafting and the other one was a team production um, that focus on TV show reporting. Our plot involves a mismanagement situation that jeopardizes the peace in the kingdom who needs a strong leader, a leader who knows management skills in order to save the day. And through analyzing a mismanagement situation caused by the king, the story then illustrates how the king's best knight, David, systematically solves problems and brings back order to the kingdom. The story includes a total of seven episodes presenting seven management functions in order to review the relationship between these functions. The main theme is to compare and contrast um, strategy, planning, and decision-making processes. Kingdom is a hierarchy organization setting. King Magnus is the head leader of this centralized organization structure. He was a great king respected by his knights and the people. But years go by, free from threats of the enemy, he becomes arrogant and complacent with his position. When the force of the enemy at the east arising, he isolated himself into his palace. Fear controls him he become reckless on his ruling. David right hand, a courageous knight who is loyal to his king. People fear him due to his power, yet trust him for his righteousness and rationality. Worries over king's reckless behaviors, David jumps into action and strategically plan to bring the kingdom back to order. Luis, left hand and the younger brother of David, a clown type of person pulling pranks around the castle. Although he's a skillful fighter, he tends to react to situation without consulting with David first. He tries to gain power over David during the unsettling time. Julian, King's jester, who knows how to make everybody laugh. Due to his insignificant position in the castle, 
he have learned to be a good communicator. He carefully persuades King Magnus to involve in the final decision-making process. Meanwhile, he helps negotiate peace between David and the Louise. Princess Alison from the east came to King Magnus, seeking aid to defeat enemy at east. King Magnus thinks she is a foe, an assassin sent by the enemy, and asks her to be killed. On the other side, David thinks she is a friend and tries to save her. Hi, my name is Alina Kane. I'm with the University of South Florida Journalism. Um, we are doing a project on the upcoming show, Friend or Foe. So we're here with Alex, the screenwriter, and Eber, the director. We're going to talk a little bit more about episode one and how that starts off. So episode one starts off in a very peaceful time. There's a great king through many years of non-conflict, he has gotten very arrogant, and he has two main knights, a left hand and a right hand, also with his uh, communicator, Julian the Jester. If you want to know more, tune in. Well, as far as uh, the management concepts for the TV show, for at least episode one, there's three of them. Uh, one being organizational structure, centralization, and division of labor. Uh, the way I portrayed centralization in the first episode was uh, making clear that the king was the head of the centralized unit. Uh, with that being said, in the first episode, he has a very tough decision once he finds about the letter. After that, he does the division of labor, which uh, the screenwriter went into. There's two nights in which he divided the labor because of their specialized skills that they hone. And uh, that's pretty much it as far as the concepts there for the first episode. Okay. Selena Kane, we're back here with Alex and Eber, um, screenwriter and director for Friend or Foe. Um, I saw in this episode that you did a great job of incorporating SWOT as a management concept, but let's go ahead and get episode two run down really quick. So in episode two, uh, like I said before, the kingdom is thriving. There's been many years of peace, but one day a dove arrives and at a surprise has a very big plot twist to the series as uh, the two knights will jump into action. And that's all I'd say for now. All right, uh, like you hit on on that, there is a swamp concept in general on this episode. I try to kind of make sure that I get uh, the abundant strength of the kingdom. So a lot of the shots that I made uh, shows the uh, numerous resources that the kingdom has, as far as the well-trained uh, army that they have as well. Um, I try to show that there's a large army, very good in strength, as far as also exposing the weakness of showing how them being in peace for so long, they weren't expecting to get attacked or to even receive, like you said, mm -hmm. the letter from the dove. Um, as far as that, they go into getting some allies, so they reach out to their neighboring kingdoms for help, which I show that as well in some of the shots. And we do get a small glimpse of the threat gathering enemies to attack the kingdom. So the SWAT concept, the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats is definitely something we use in a lot of situations, not just this episode. Uh, yes, I would say that it's something that it grows into as the series continues. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Hi, my name is Helena. We're back again with Alex and Eber um, from the show Friend or Foe. This episode is really exciting because it works on strategy and kind of comparing and contrasting those different characters. But let's go ahead and get the rundown for episode three. So after the dove arrives with the plot twist, the king is not so arrogant anymore. He um, goes into hiding. He appoints his two highest knights, David and Louise, with power. And from there on, it becomes destruction, madness, and if you want to find out the rest, tune in. All right, so for this episode, I wanted to expand on the strategy formation, which is the compare and contrast. Um, we do that with uh, the two characters that are left in charge, David and Luis. Uh, as far as how they get there, um, they split between the strategy objectives, which starts with the allocation of resources, and then goes to task priorities, and then pretty much ending up with the delegation of responsibilities. Uh, all this leads to a compare and contrast as far as how David goes the ethical route and the reasoning route and finding out 
where to start his investigation and uh, Lewis kind of going the reckless route and the spontaneous route and just kind of picking and choosing who he wants to interview to find out where the foot is. Thank you guys. Hi, my name is Elena. We're back with Alex and Eber from the story plot of Friend or Foe. Um, we're going to go ahead and go over episode four a little bit and talk about how they incorporate communication. Okay, so in this episode, um, after getting off the last one, the king has gone completely mad. He's hiding in his quarters. He doesn't want to come out. His number one communicator, Julian, also the number one jester, is trying to negotiate with him to come out, as well as appoint roles for David and Luis on what they want to do about the situation. Okay, so I know for communication, there's four parts to it. There's the encoding, the sending, the receiving, and the decoding, but I also noticed that for one particular character, you only used one of those. So can we talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I went in depth uh, with the communication role as far as Julian, as uh, the screenwriter said. Um, Julian plays the role of the communicator, and that means that he negotiates the term between the king and the knights. Um, as the sender, uh, he must eliminate the noise that he gets from the note and interpret the message correctly. Um, as far as that, it's kind of hard for him to do that because he is in a lower rank of a centralized hierarchy, and he has to overcome the communication barrier to persuade the king to let him know, hey, like it's safe to, for you to be outside. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Hi, my name is Helena. We're back again with Alex and Eber um, from the story of Friend or Foe. Let's talk a little bit more about episode five. So here in episode five, uh, amongst all the commotion, the king is still in his quarters. He's uh, going crazier and crazier every day. He's starting to think maybe a foe is a friend. And during all this, a stranger arrives on a white horse, a female, very beautiful. And um, everyone is hesitant to let her in at first, but she wants to speak to the king. Um, they all have to go on a roundabout table, the king and his two knights, and make a very big decision leading up into this. So, uh, as far as the management concepts for this episode, it's one of the most in-depth, I would say. Uh, this details um, three uh, decision-making models, uh, being classical, um, Bounded rationality and the retrospective de uh, decision. Um, as far as that, and uh, it goes into David, which he does a classical decision making process, which uh, it's seven steps. The first one being identifying the problem, developing objectives and weighing its criteria, uh, generating alternatives, analyzing alternatives, selecting an alternative, implementing that alternative, and then monitoring and evaluating his decision. So with uh, the character Lewis, he does the bounded rationality model, which is satisficing, um, which means pretty much the very first thing that popped into his head is the decision that he made. Uh, he didn't outweigh any of the consequences or any other um, ideas, pretty much. Uh, he did it very quickly, irrationally, and uh, that's pretty much it with that one. Uh, as far as the king, he did the retrospective decision model making, which uh, it's pretty much he knew he made a bad decision and he tries to rationalize it, not really knowing like how it affected the kingdom overall. Alright, thank you guys. My name is We're back again with Alex and Eber um, from Friend or Foe. We're going to talk a little bit about episode 6 and how that goes. Okay, so in this episode there was a very hard decision that was made. Um, the king and his two knights implemented on a certain situation among uh that has to do with the stranger waiting outside the castle to meet the king and through all that we have Luis recognizing what he needs to do and david taking charge so as far as the main concept of implementation i also know that when you have a strategy you have to implement it correctly and you also have to focus on the organizational structure so how did you go about doing that yes so with that uh the character david in the episode follows his strategic plan and sends his uh, best unit leader to the kingdom uh, that's in contrast to the centralized structure um, flow and uh, David gives authority to the leader, which makes it a decentralized uh, structure. Um, because he does this, the decentralized division translates to um, the leader's strategic plan into tactical and operational. And uh, this emphasizes on the conduct of the actions of their own territory. And because of this, David and Luis are able to work together 
and conquer the problem uh, as a unit. Gotcha, thank you. Hi, my name is Elena. We're back again to talk about the last episode of Friend or Foe with Alex and Eber. So let's go ahead and give the rundown for that last episode. So for the season finale, uh, peace is finally restored again. Um, the king isn't going bonkers anymore. Uh, I don't want to say too much, but we will say it has a very nice uh, happy ending and a little bit of a cliffhanger for possibly a season two. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah. I did notice that this episode in particular focused a lot on organizational change and the three concepts of that, you know, the freezing, the moving, and the unfreezing. So how did you go ahead and break that down? Yeah, so about that, uh, with the concept of freezing, it's pretty much caused by inertia. So the peace in the kingdom that was, you know, for so long, made the people not have to worry about a threat, it made them not want to change, it made it seem like everything was all right. Uh, but after the threat, you know, you hit the moving part, which uh, it was when, you know, uh, Lewis was doing all those interrogations and that was causing resistance, you know. So that's when the strategic planning is crucial to make sure that the changes are implemented. And then at the end, uh, you, we hit on unfreezing, which uh, reinforces the change that was made to everyone in the kingdom so that the old habit wouldn't happen. So maybe they're on, they're on more alert for any threats and uh, they don't want to go back to even having a threat. So that's pretty much so it. So not only are we talking about organizational change, we're also talking about strategy and decision making, which I think is really great for younger audiences because we use that in everyday life, right? Yeah, so pretty much uh, our audiences is K through 12 and um, trying to help them learn how to make decisions on their own and try to develop good decision making skills. So. All right, thank you guys. I'm really thank excited you. to see how this turns out. All right, thank you. Super. This is our general conclusion. Changes are inevitable in a managerial world that encourages managers to think strategically. Maintaining a goal-setting manner to accomplish tasks by allocating resources efficiently and coordinating them with the team effectively. While solving a problem, managers respond by setting goals and objectives proactively. Then, they apply analysis to evaluate external and internal environments that have some impact on an organization's competitive advantage. Managers also understand the organization structure in order to form strategies that will be carried out through centralized or decentralized formation. Managers rely on their team to accomplish tasks. Therefore, team members should involve decision-making processes and provide feedback to further rationalize the final decision and avoid groupthink mistakes. Managers play various roles. Each role is different yet interrelated. To motivate and to build trust among team members also ensuring that implementation strategies have been executed thoroughly. The management processes that go through planning, organi organizing, directing, and controlling require managers to think strategically.